I took an unattended break from making videos over the past few months. I got busy, and one thing led to another, and here it is, the new year. In all these months, I've been capturing footage, and I'm hoping to get back into the editing and production process to get caught up. We'll start with the threshing of rice from our patties. Just before the first snow of this year, while racing around the garden trying desperately to shrink my pre-winter to-do list, I managed to harvest the rice from the patties where it's been diligently growing all season and then drying for much longer than I probably should have left it. But even when the face of my inattention, I'm extremely pleased with this experiment. If you followed this channel for a while, you're familiar with our homestead scale rice patty experiment. If not, I recommend you check out that series of videos. I began with one variety and four patties made from 55 gallon drums cut in half lengthwise. Last year, I expanded to another variety and also tripled the growing space dedicated to rice. This is the first season I've actually harvested, as the first season I grew it was really an experiment dedicated to ensuring I could grow rice and learning how much work would be needed. Once I harvested the rice and got it inside on the drying racks, I spent several hours lost in YouTube wormholes dedicated to learning the various threshing practices I could find. It's a fascinating subject, and I've added a trip to China to see some of the long-sustained rice fields, like those of the Longjai terraces. Barring an entire village spending weeks threshing and winnowing, I've tried a modified version of a technique that works well for several small-scale grown crops the old pillowcase against a wall method. This method worked fairly well, though I don't have anything to compare it to, as this is my first rice threshing. I've since spoken with a friend of mine who's a school garden coordinator. He says his method is to give each of the students a few stalks. The kids then get them off individually while they're sitting inside on a wintry day when they can't go out, and need to listen to a lecture about the history of rice cultivation and its impact on human development. Many hands like work and all that. I don't really have that many hands, so this will work, at least on this scale. One thing I learned quickly is that too much rice in the pillowcase leads to too many heads not separating. Essentially, I think the volume of rice I had in the case in the first time ended up insulating some of the heads from impact. With the next go round, I put fewer stalks in the cloth and it seemed to produce fewer stalks with seeds still attached when I opened up the pillowcase. Since this experiment worked out so well, and it's been relatively easy to thresh the rice, I'm going to be growing it again, and once again next year, I'll expand my rice paddy growing area. That said, I want to save some of this seed for planting, and since I've grown two varieties, I took extra care during this entire process, from harvest through threshing, to keep the two varieties separate. If there was any doubt, for instance, if a stalk fell on the floor, or one was leaning over from one drying rack tray to another, I discarded it. This doesn't mean it was wasted. I will eat it, after all. I just won't save a variety for planting if I don't know for sure which variety it is. Once the seed heads have been removed from the stalks, it's time to put them into storage containers and label them. 
I'm not going to be separating my seed stock from my eating rice just yet. Everything of one variety will go into a single bucket. I'll pull out some seed when I get a chance, and the rest will go into a separate bucket for hull removal and further processing. For now, though, I just need a bucket and a sharpie. I'm surprised and quite pleased with the amount of rice I obtained from my small growing area. From two 4 by 16 foot beds, I obtained a half gallon of Hakukiari seed. I don't know if that's a good yield, but since I wasn't sure I'd get anything worth writing home about, it seems like a lot, and frankly, I'm pretty happy. With the second variety, which was a trial this year and therefore there was a lot less, I kept the seed stalks all oriented the same way and the heads were all at relatively the same height when they went into the pillowcase. This yielded better results in terms of number of stalks that came out of the pillowcase with seeds still attached. This makes sense to me. In all the videos I've watched, traditional cultural rice harvest involves trying the stalks in large bundles and setting them to cure. The bundles are all uniform and the heads are all aligned, which I'm sure makes threshing against a rock much easier. There's wisdom in the experience of millennia of agricultural heritage, and it's smart for those of us looking to produce our own food to rely upon that wisdom. Next year, I'll be more careful when harvesting and bundling, attending to keep the heads all the same plane when I'm putting them on the drying racks. I don't know if this is necessary, but I wasn't satisfied with the number of stalks that came out of the pillowcase with seeds heads still attached. In the traditional threshing I've seen, they don't have this issue, or at least they don't worry about the occasional stalks still sticking to the seed heads. I just wanted to see if I could get any more of the stalks that I'd already beat against the wall to release a few more heads. <laughs> 